Right, it's 2022 and we're still talking about mountain bike wheel sizes, but I do think actually with good reason. So now we've got three main wheel sizes. You've got 27.5, 29 or both. Yes, mixed wheel sizes or mullet, whatever you want to call it, means a 29 up front and 27.5 in the rear. Is this just complicating matters or is it the best of both worlds? All right, if you haven't done already, hit that subscribe button. We release a video every day. Plus we've got GMBN Tech if you want to get into the more nitty gritty of the tech stuff. Right, this is a Canyon Torque CF8 in mixed wheel size, but actually the torque range comes in all options. So you've got 27.5, 29 and the mullet. So the 29er, they call it an enduro race machine. 27.5, they reckon that's a bike park slayer for some, uh, doing some big jumps, stuff like that. Whereas Canyon say the mullet is the ideal setup for the speed obsessed rider that still wants an agile and playful bike. Sounds like me. Whilst Canyon sell different models for different wheel sizes, some bikes like the Orbea Rallon actually comes a 29er and they've got a spare linkage that comes in a box that gives you the option to use the same bike, swap out the linkage, swap out the rear wheel for a smaller one and away you go. So are they the best of both worlds? They've definitely got momentum on the downhill and enduro race scene. Notably, Lote Bruni and Martin Mays really pushed these to begin with, love riding them. But now you see a lot of racers on the gravity scene running this mixed wheel setup. It kind of feels to me a little bit like in the last year or two, 27.5 wheel sizes on new bikes have kind of faded a little bit. All the new bikes you see released tend to be 29er, I think, uh, but there are definitely people that still want to ride 27.5 bikes. The smaller wheels are more agile. If we're throwing the bike around from one way direction to the next, corner to corner, they definitely move that little bit easier. Also, there are plenty of riders like dirt jumpers, slope star riders that just will like to have a smaller wheel in the air for the same reason. Those bikes can be thrown around so much easier and for the bigger tricks, just like less weight is easier. And a lot of those riders will have ridden 26 inch wheels until they couldn't get any more spares. For shorter riders, the smaller wheels can just suit those smaller frames a bit better. Now that isn't a rule for everybody. There's plenty of riders riding really well who are maybe a bit shorter on 29er bikes. And those frames are designed around it, even though they're smaller bikes uh, for the smaller people. But, the, you know, like I say, that's not a rule for everyone, but shorter riders might find with a big wheel, 29er wheel, they're just gonna buzz their bum a bit quicker. Lighter wheels have less rotational mass, so they're easier to get going, but also easier on the brakes to stop. But that doesn't necessarily mean that a 27.5 wheel is gonna be lighter than 29er. Although if they are the same components, you know, same spec on the rim, the spokes and the hub, then they are likely to be lighter. Also lighter just means better for going uphill. The biggest advantage of a 29er wheel is the rollover. So the angle of attack on the ground is just less on a bigger wheel. So a rollover, little bumps, easier. And on anything but the smoothest of trails, you will notice this. Tiny little bumps, roots, rocks, whatever. The wheels get over quicker, easier should I say. It feels quicker and it will feel a lot smoother as well. But bigger wheels will be harder to stop. And in those situations where you have to make a big effort to stop, like maybe you're riding something steep or you just want to stop really fast, when you need that dynamic movement to the back of the bike, that's when I find that I run out of space. Just that bigger wheel behind you, you've got less room to move back. Uh, again, for shorter riders, they can find that is a little bit of a problem. So for more technical and downhill riding, I do think the full 29ers really suit taller riders, sort of six foot plus. But there is more to consider than just the wheel sizes because with a full 29er bike, the wheelbase is going to be longer than a 27.5, but also you have more BB drop. So where you stand on the bike is lower compared to the axles on a 27 wheel bike. And that feels like you're stood in the bike and with that extra wheelbase as well, it makes the bike feel super stable. But why mixed wheel? Well, now we know the advantages of the 29er front end, it smooths out all the bumps, it's gonna help your suspension fork out. It's gonna give you grip and stability. And I've got quite a lot of experience with 29er and mixed wheel size setups now. I'm five foot 10 and I do think I'm right on the cusp of being able to ride a full 29er properly. I do feel like I run out of space a bit on the back end, not just for that dynamic movement where I've kind of said moving back to the rear wheel to stop the bike quickly, but also I find in cornering, sometimes a big wheel, I'll sort of drag on the inside of my thigh from really trying to angle the bike over from one way to the next. I find that I kind of, my leg gets in the way sometimes. And that's why I do really like a 27.5 rear wheel. 
you've got the advantage of the 29 up front and for me, it feels like I can throw the bike around a bit more aggressively and stop it quicker when it comes to really technical riding. I will admit that that is definitely a feeling. Whether there's any physics to back this up, I don't know. And taller riders may not agree with me. They might find that there's plenty of space on the back of the bike anyway on a 429er. I know Blake doesn't love mixed wheel. He likes 27.5 or 29. He feels like the bike is kind of choppered out, which I kind of like that in a bike. I, for my style of riding, I'm definitely more of a speed freak than Blake is. He's more jumps and having fun. So I kind of like the feel of a bike being a bit slacker, even if that's not really the case. It kind of is a little bit, because like I was talking before, if you've got a full 29er, the BB drop is quite significant. But if you then put a 27.5 rear wheel on, then it's kind of half and half, I guess. But hands up, I really like mixed wheel size bikes. And I think I'd probably choose to run this on any bike that I could, except for a cross country bike where you want the roll over both ends and I wouldn't want the compromise. To be able to ride the more aggressive trails, I'm not gonna do it so much on a cross country bike anyway. So yeah, I think I do like this. Disadvantages of running mixed wheel sizes. Well, I guess for spares, you know, if you're a person like I, I do actually quite like swapping my tires. I always find that I wear a rear tire out first while so swap the front to the back and buy one new tire. You don't get the chance to do that. Or if you're running tubes, you might have to buy two spare tires, two spare tubes. I don't do that. But to be honest, I'm tubeless anyway. Rims, uh, up to you. You may not be one of those riders that likes to have spares or you might just find that you have to buy two of them. All right, so that's how I feel. For uh, gravity-fed riding, I do really like the mixed wheel sizes, but what about putting it against the clock? Fortunately, I've got the series of what's faster videos I've done, so I've got a long list of the bikes that are fastest, and I can try this out on my mullet Canyon Talk and see, actually, what the scores say on the board. Noticeably, actually, the fastest bike so far is a 429, it's my Newproof Giga. And there's been a couple of mullet bikes on this list as well. And the fastest of those is my uh, Orbea Rallon in the mullet setup. But that's over three seconds slower than that Newproof Giga. So let's see how fast this Canyon Torque mullet can go. I've teleported back to the dirt shed uh, to give you the time. Uh, so fortunately, I've got this trail that I use for what's fastest. I've got nine times on the leaderboard already. Uh, two of those are the mullet bikes, like I've said already. But the Canyon Talk mullet did the track in a time of 1.43.14. So slots into fourth place, about a second and a half slower than the fastest bike, the Newproof Giga, full 29er. But it is the fastest of all the mullets, so it beats the All Bayer Rallon and the Newproof Descent, which is a downhill bike. So interesting for me, maybe not so much for you, but I do like to see how these bikes compare on the time. Um, so what does that tell me? Well, it's not as fast as the uh, other full 29er bikes. So, you know, maybe mullet bikes or mixed wheels bikes aren't as fast as a full 29er, but is it more fun? I mean, I think so. I think it totally depends on the track as well. I think the, the gnarlier, the more tech you go, I think the more that the mixed wheel shines. So on the, you know, World Cup downhill circuit, proper gnarly enduro, I think just having that bit more space around the back of the bike to move, I think helps, but it is a bit subjective. Let me know what you think down below. Have you tried a mixed wheel size bike? Do you want to? Uh, is it the future? I don't know. I, what I do know is I think it's great that now we've got three 
really good choices for wheel sizes. They're gonna suit different styles of riders and different sizes of riders. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you love watching videos about mountain bikes and let me know if you've got any questions about mixed wheel size.